Welcome to a special edition of an Easy Achievers episode. Normally, I'm joined by Alex, sitting across from me digitally, but not not this time. Certain things uh, in our scheduling has messed up a regularly scheduled program. Um, I had some family in. He's been busy with, of course, his newborn. So I decided I'll talk to the Achievers directly in a solo podcast. I won't be going over the news as normal because I think we can just do that when me and Alex eventually get one up. So we will be getting up a normally scheduled program eventually before, I'm assuming next Wednesday, um, at the very least. Uh, I can promise you that. Um, But what I'm going to do in the interim is talk about something that that was very interesting that's happening right now. And I'm sure everyone's listened and heard about it. I'm going to read this from, straight from the source, right? So NBA 2K21, as you may know, is going to be $10 more on Xbox Series X and PS5. Now, 2K announced that yesterday at the very early. I actually woke up and, and noticed it um, at, I think, like 6 a.m., 7 a.m. It was starting to go off, and I was reading it, and my first thought was, oh, it's finally happening, right? It's fine. It, it's about time, I guess. Um, this is a long time coming and things, but um, I had some people not share that specific viewpoint, right? I had a couple friends thinking this price point was maybe too much, uh, because sixty dollars is already so much to people, right? Why raise it even more, especially with it being two K, knowing uh, with M- sorry two K with specifically NBA two K twenty. Um, most of that fan base does know that they are uh, known for predatory uh, pricing, regardless of this extra ten dollar hike, right? So I'll be curious to see if that changes. And uh, just in case you don't know, NBA 2K21 has a online service, and it does sell microtransactions. Now, the microtransactions um, I have seen and heard to be pretty predatory and pretty um, uh, pay-to-play, literally. Um, uh, uh, Sorry, pay-to-win. I believe you can quickly boost one of your characters that you create to in highest level possible which is 99 overall stat wise um so i'll be curious if 2k takes a step back from that i highly highly doubt that um but that is a discussion for another time what i wanted to talk about today is why these people are growing ten dollars more and why should we be welcoming it and i know that's probably a second part that begins your thought process of, well, I don't want to welcome it. Well, of course, none of us want this, right? I don't think a single person is 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 literally happy and excited to pay ten more dollars, right? No one's sitting there like, oh yeah, I get less money now. Like I, I can I can sell, I can spend more, and you know have less money in my pocket, right? But I will I will say that when I heard that it was getting ten dollars more, I was I was excited at the thought of the extra ten dollars, right? Going towards the developers I care about, making development more sustainable, right? Triple A game spacing is known for the high, high price tag, right? A very high price to entry, especially if you're looking at a triple A game. And sixty dollars is, of course, a lot of money, but you do need to sell a lot of copies to first even break even. Second, then to make profit, and if, just in case you don't know, p- people who make video games aren't looking for an extra million, right? They're not looking to make another million dollars. They like they want return on investment plus. You normally don't make a video game to make ten, twenty thousand dollars. That's just not worth most developers' time, and there's d- much better ways that they can spend their money. Um, uh, an easy way of that is thinking of movies. It's kind of similar to movies as well. Uh, but I'm going to go back to Windows Central on this one. 
um, because uh, you know some people will be thinking, well, it's just two K twenty one, right? They are gonna raise to seventy. This doesn't mean every other developer will. Well, according to Windows Central, I'm going to read the article, right? So speaking with GamesIndustry.biz, games research firm IDG Consulting explained that the price of making games has only gone up with development cost rising anywhere from 200% to 300%. Meanwhile, game prices have not risen since the release of the Xbox 360 and PS3 in 2005 and 2006, respectively, which saw new game releases go from an average of $50 to $60. IDG then explains its sources indicates many game uh, sorry, many game publishers uh, because, of course, uh, as a quick side note, publishers are the ones that are generally making all of the money moves, the money dealings, everything considering to the actual pricing and uh, marketing is mainly done by the publisher. The publisher is what uh, a developer gives to their game to then literally publish to the market and bring it to the market to show off, um, whether it be through marketing, through uh giving it to like you know the highest streamers uh the highest people who are known to talk about games and get them sold uh and things of that nature uh idg explains its sources indicate many game publishers are considering this price hike in that it will that while a ten dollar increase in pricing doesn't completely cover these increased game development costs it does quote move it more in proper direction end quote IDG also noted that while not every game warrants a price rise, quote, flagship AAAs, end quote, will be most likely to see the new $70 baseline price. With game costs rising, it will be interesting to see how subscription services like Xbox Game Pass and PlayStation Now are affected. Xbox Series X and PS5 are both scheduled to release in holiday 2020. Just as a reminder at the end there. Now, quite interesting to bring up the subscription service right because that that's going to be my end point in all of this um but i wanted to bring up right not every game warrants a price raise right so i don't think this is going to be across the board ten dollars everything right i don't think for instance let's say ori and the blind forest or will of the wisp whichever one you want to pick that game is not that let's say i i think it, it, it didn't come out i think that's a flow six down game i honestly don't know because i have it on game pass um so let's bring up um moonlighter which i believe moonlighter uh was a 20 dollars game it's an indie game i don't think if that game now came out today it would be 30 dollars. i think this is case by case these are huge triple a develop sorry publishers trying to make more money to cover costs of the actual development right and this does come on the back of the game industry being ridiculed for bad practices in crunch and in actual uh uh how they treat developers on whenever they delay a game that doesn't really fix crunch that just makes it to where that one thing that they had to cut due to time can now be implemented so it doesn't really cut down in crunch at all uh this is coming on the back of all that and that will be the most interesting part right is this money going to help devs in the long run is this going to put um this kind of crunch culture the kind of uh long development times out of the window is this gonna give time for devs to take their time not want to crunch not want to feel like they're forced to make these games immediately have something out quickly um that they need to spend long hours in the in their offices uh leaving around at like eight o'clock having a 16 hour week day um every day for months I'll be curious to see that. I, for one, um, don't hate crunch. I know that is not a popular opinion. Um, the, some of these, uh, as long as no one's being forced to do crunch, uh, they can do it as they will and want. Um, I, as I, I don't really mind if someone loves their game so much that they want to devote months and months of their time to make it something that they're proud of. That's between them and frankly their boss uh so i don't find a need to comment on any crunch time um because again that is something that's between that individual person and that boss 
Uh, and there has been talks of unionizing, so maybe that this extra $10 will help with money um, concerns or money woes that some devs come in. Uh, I'm assuming people with the extra $10, where, where is that going to go? That's a new question that's, that can be asked, right? Is this going to go to help devs at all? Is this just to help publish your money, right? That did say game dev uh, to cover game development. There's a lot that comes into game development, right? You got to pay every single person that's working on it by first, um, including vacation, sick time. Depending on what state you're in, there's a lot more uh, taxing and different types of things that you need to worry about. Um, so it's a it's a lot more long-winded than that. But I did want to bring up that $10, right? That's the idea of this show. Um, saying why $10 and we should welcome it, right? So we got that $10 from the game publishers. Everyone is thinking about doing it. I think 2K is just the first nail to fall because if I'm being frank, I have a lot of friends that play NBA um, and they're buying this game regardless. I honestly think they probably could have made it $80 and people probably still would have bought the game. Um, uh, if, if they haven't lost people with their, frankly, um, BS uh, pay-to-win mechanics in the game, then they're not going to lose anyone from raising in ten dollars. Um, and also, they have a Mamba edition with, of course, Kobe Bryant on the front for a hundred dollars, um, which can be either seen very nice because it's in honor of Kobe Bryant, or very, um, I guess you could say, in bad taste, uh, since you're you know raising the price and using the love of this great player and this. Uh, gentleman in his death year basically to sell more copies it could be looked at both ways i personally think it is an homage i think it's guaranteed i think it just hadn't happened since that this game is ten dollars more um doesn't have anything to do with kobe bryant i think i don't think they think they can make more money off it being with him um I, of course it helps because that man is very very famous now, let's go back to what I think is the most interesting thing about this article and what everyone has been bringing up. $60, right? Um, I think it's easy to forget inflation exists, right? Especially here in America, right? Everyone in America knows that inflation exists. Uh, $60 is not the same today as it was in 2005. I can I can tell you that. Um, if you go to any inflation calculator like I just did, I went to uh, usinflationcalculator.com, right? You plug it in. If in 2005 I purchased an item for $60, then in 2020, what would that item be, right? And I just put that in, hit calculate. Well, that item would actually today cost $78.77. That is a rate of 31.3% inflation. So, of course... That makes a lot more sense, right? $60 in 2005 has not, has changed. It is not the same money. Um, I know that is very weird and uh, backwards to say, but that is not the same. It is no longer the same uh, value as other uh, things have had. So when you go into that aspect, then you can think, oh, hey, it makes a lot more sense in that context. Um, sorry about that I had an audio issue there um but i'm back now so the uh, saying it's 78.77 right the actual increase makes a lot more sense right looking at it, another ten dollars okay they actually could have went to 80 and a little make more sense it would have literally still been 60 dollars right so it is false to say that game prices haven't changed if you know the inflation rate game prices have changed just not to you literally in the monetary sense right it has only changed in the aspect of hey uh, that dollar is less now, they have to now cost it more. That is just literal economics, right? It costs more. So we add in the $10. That helps stiffen the cost of development that they brought up before. This will hopefully curve that into something more um, that the devs will want. Less uh, crunch time, less all that. 
we've run, we've already run over this. Um, but this is most welcome to me, right? Hopefully, with this seventy dollars with all the AAA games, this will make them even better, right? With everyone wanting these next gen games, right? The next feeling games, right? This is a battle of escalation we've seen between all devs, right? You want the prettier game, right? You want you want a more uh, uh, a better feeling game. You want everything to look nicer, feel uh, feel better. Uh, over these years, that it, the 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 wants for better has only increased. Um, if we look at a 2005 game and a 2020 game, doesn't look the same at all, right? So, if the tech has changed, then most likely the price must change, correct? Um, I think I think so. I'll be curious if you guys agree with me. Make sure you listen and sound off in the comments below. Tweet at me at EVM1000. What do you think of this price change? Do you welcome it? Are you going to pay for it? Um, is this something you're interested in? This is something I just wanted to talk about very quickly um, in a solo podcast on just why we should be welcoming this $10 into the marketplace and why it why we think it sh it should be welcomed in it's not just a ploy to get more money. They're actually trying to get the same amount of money than uh, uh, than they um, were making in 2005. Um, I will say, coming off of Last of Us Part Two, that I can only agree with the extra ten dollars, right? Because I want more Last of Us Part Twos. If I want more Last of Us Part Two, I got to put the money where my mouth is, and I got to put in the money to the devs. I got I got to pay that extra little ten dollars to increase these games to make them better to make them better and also this keeps the microtransactions and loot boxes away from the games we love. If we want more single player games, I got to be willing to pay for them. If they're non no longer profitable or not as profitable, then I have to show them a reason to make the games that I want, and this is one way I can show it. Here is ten dollars more. I will happily pay this additional cost to get something that I will like. And that I will actually pay, uh, play with and enjoy. So I don't have to worry about paying an additional sum of money for something I am already currently enjoying. So, again, what do you think? Put it down in the comments below. Tweet at me. If you don't agree, that's perfectly fine. Tell me why you don't agree. Why should we not go up $10? Why do you think this money might be wasted by the pubs? There are many different ways you can look at this. Many different outlets. This could just be a one-time thing with specifically 2K. This can only be them. Everyone else will stay $60 and it was just 2K this one time. That is a possibility. I don't think that will happen, of course, but that is a possibility. What do you think of that? Is there other ways that we can look in this that I'm just missing? Please tell me. Again, comments below. Head over to Twitter, at EV9000. Let me know what you think. You can, of course, go over to patreon.com slash to help us keep this going. Keeps the mics on, the lights on, and it keeps my computer running because this thing is a hunk of junk. Um, tell me how everything sounds. I am using a new programming service. Uh, if it still sounds nice, make sure you tell me. And, of course, the comments below. Uh, reach out to us on Twitter. Tell me how it sounds. I think it sounds good. It sounds better to me, but of course, um, I'm not on your guys' end, and you guys probably will have better ears than I do, because mine's not that great. <laughs> all right. Thank you all so much for joining me today. Remember, patreon.com slash Achievers. Give us a buck that gives you the exclusive every single month. Any additional gets you everything early, and you can also have direct access to us to talk about whatever you'd like. Thank you for listening. Go Achieve.